Hello there! What is going on, everyone? We are live. This is the Star Wars Atomic Mass Games pre-show. This is, uh, we're going to be talking about everything that we expect to see from today's live stream. Uh, and, yeah. Um, wow, that looks strange. Looking at my own live stream, it looks like I can only see a quarter of the stuff. I'm going to try this again. All right. Hello there. We're, we are trying again. Um, I'm curious if you can see all of me or if it's, uh, we're still having technical difficulties. So let me know. Um, let me know in the comments section if you guys can, uh, if you guys can see me, but, uh, yeah, it looks, uh, looks like my images. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to check it out again. Looks like I can only see a little bit of myself. Uh, are you guys seeing just Star Wars and, and nothing else? Or can you see? You guys can see me? Oh, we got a super chat from Mario Lara. Armada height gets separatists. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm glad to hear it. Uh, yes. Uh, well, thank you for, for supporting the channel. Um, I've got good news for everybody hanging out today. I'm going to be sharing this out on social media. Share it with your friends so nobody misses it. I don't want people to miss. Uh, so people are kind of wondering probably why we're doing that, why I'm going to, because I'm going to restream it. You can watch along with me. You can also watch on Atomic Mass Games' own Twitch channel. If you guys are fans of Twitch, you can do that there. I'll also be restreaming it here. Uh, the big reason uh, for this is for uh, for basically uh, not everybody likes to use Twitch. Uh, also, so we can hang out and talk about it beforehand and after. So that's also good. Uh, I'll probably also do another recap video tomorrow. So if you're not able to hang around for the whole time, you can do that. Um, where can you watch it? You can watch it right here. We're going to do it right here. It doesn't go live for about another 25 minutes or so. We have some time for that. I'm going to share this out on social media a little bit. Um, yeah, there, let's share that on Twitter. Uh, we're going to share that on Facebook. I would share it on Instagram, but no, I don't think that's integrated and Instagram doesn't really do video. So I'm not really worried about that. I just post pictures of my games on Instagram. Um, also, all right, we got, uh, bu -bu 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 uh, sharing, um, all right, there we go. And, oh, we got another super chat from Spider Wave Aesthetic. What's going on, Spider Wave? Thank you. Uh, they say, Lucre Hulk and Republic Commandos, please. I'm assuming you mean for Armada and then Legion, respectively, and not the other way around. Also, we've got some cool giveaways. We're going to do some giveaways a little bit later on. Uh, so this is all the more reason for you to hang out and uh, stick around for after the show. Uh, I've got some cool Gen Con uh, promos from some older games, maybe some X-Wing stuff too, maybe some maybe some other interesting things. Man, like like how many of you guys, here's, I'm gonna give you a little preview right now. How many of you guys still remember a little game called Imperial Assault? How about an Emperor Palpatine promo from Gen Con 2019 for Imperial Assault? Hard to find now, right? Maybe a little nostalgic value for some of y'all folks out there. I'll be mailing these out, so it doesn't matter where in the world you are. I do have international stamps. We can certainly mail stuff internationally as well. I know I've had a lot of people ask uh, if it is too late to get stuff. What, um, how late is this? So the, the stream is going to start in about 20 minutes. Uh, you can watch on Atomic Mass Games, or you can watch right here. I will be uh, switching over. We'll switch over to a different screen, and I will turn my mic off so you won't hear me giggle with excitement. You can hear me giggle with excitement afterwards, because we'll talk about it after the fact. Um, so, yeah, so that is going on. We've got, well, we got 180 viewers right now so far. That is very cool. We're excited to be, uh, to be hanging out with you. We're excited to have you with us today. I'm excited uh, to have all of you guys, so that is very cool. Oh, this is this is so strange. I, I have such a such a bizarre um, interface right now. The you the YouTube Studio streaming studio that shows me everything is just acting bizarre. So that's uh, that's cool. So anyway, um, so what are we expecting to see? So uh, I, I do want to manage expectations a little bit because I think a lot of folks are probably wondering 
you know, if we're going to get a whole bunch of like new wave expansions, if this is going to be kind of like the in-flight brief that they do for Gen Con. And I want to caution you guys against that because first off, it's too early. And second off, this is a new company that isn't going to have that much stuff developed uh, for these games yet. So you're not going to get like a whole new wave uh, plus a new game, plus uh, you know uh, new expansions for other things and all kinds of new stuff for you know for all of the different games that you love. I don't think um, you'll you'll have all of that. You might have a little bit of a spoiler, like maybe like maybe one or two um, spoilers is my guess. I do think we can definitely expect to see spoilers though because Simone Elliott actually uh, tweeted about this and she, who's the new head of studio. She used to be the licensing uh, manager for for Fantasy Flight Games. Now she's the head of studio for Atomic Mass Games, which is helping kind of grease the skids into into the new into the new stuff. Uh, so which is really really cool. Um, but yeah, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, oh, we got a lot of questions over here. We got we, I'm, uh, there's more than I can get to right now. So let me get through what I'm saying first, and I'll try and take a few questions. So I appreciate you guys uh, interacting. Let let us know what you guys are looking for. I do have a list of some of my questions. Also, I gotta pull that up too. I don't want to forget my list of questions because then I get overwhelmed on the spot. Um, you know, we've got questions. I know there's a lot of questions about organized play. Uh, are they going to continue? Uh, with organized play. I think that's something we might see an answer to. Uh, at, at least, uh, I think there'll be a lot of predictable type of answers. Like, I expect things along the lines of how it's going. I expect things along the lines of, hey, stay tuned for more cool stuff. Um, you know, things like that. I uh, I also um, I also think we'll get a little bit in the way of previews because Simone uh, tweeted that there, there might be a little bit of spoilers. Uh, I don't think there'll be a lot of spoilers. I think there'll be a little bit of spoilers. I actually have the headphones on today so I can listen along with you guys, and uh, and that will be cool. So we'll we'll switch over once they get started. We will switch over and uh, and and that will be fun. So um, yeah, so that is fun. All right, so. Um, Viper says, "I wish FFG would make a Halo tabletop game." Well, I don't know if FFG is going to make too many more tabletop games. I think FFG is just sticking with board games and and LCGs for right now. Um, Lucre Hulk announcement. A lot of folks asking for the Lucre Hulk. I think that would be pretty cool. Um, I think the Lucre Hulk is definitely uh, in the realm of possibilities. Although, I mean, we still have four more ships coming out for Star Wars Armada. So that is something I'm not uh, sure is going to be announced right away. But uh, it, it certainly is possible. I, I'm curious if we'll see much out of Legion because Luke Eddy uh, did transition over to Atomic Mass Games. I don't know if Luke Eddy is going to be on this stream or not, but I think so. Uh, I actually have another video I want to make about Luke Eddy. So if you guys, how many of you guys in chat, right? Let me know how many of you guys are Legion players. I want to hear from the Legion folks in chat how many people are looking forward to some Legion news uh, because Luke is uh, a friend of mine and he I caught him tweeting something pretty funny the other day. I think, well, maybe anybody who follows him on Twitter may have seen the same thing. I'm not trying to pretend like following him on Twitter is some kind of you know, special uh, special privilege or anything like that. But uh, there is some Legion folks representing in the chat. All right. So uh, so Luke said uh, something along the lines of uh, seeing some some new sculpts for some new expansions that were coming out and with the uh, redacted kind of uh, disclaimer in there. And so uh, kind of teasing that there are expansions that are in the works. So that is good. Now, I'm a little curious how much of that is existing work from Fantasy Flight Games that's transitioning over to Atomic Mass Games or how much of it is all new developed under Atomic Mass Games. We got a lot of chat. We got a lot of people. We got 329 viewers right now hanging out in the chat today. So I want to thank you guys for hanging out with us. We are going to be watching the stream here. You can watch it right here or you can watch it over on Twitch TV slash Atomic Mass Games. That is where they are doing it themselves. You can watch it in both places if you want. Uh, we will be uh, we'll be switching over once they go live. We've got about 18 minutes until they're scheduled to go live. Usually, Atomic Mass Games live streams tend to last for about one hour. Uh, if you are still here, uh, we'll switch back over and uh, and start talking about the oh my gosh things that we find. Um, I know the last time we did a big watch party for this, it was around the time of Gen Con, and they had a lot of technical difficulties, which was one of the advantages of being able to watch along here with me, is that I could kind of pause in and pause out, and when they when their stream went down, I could just switch back over to here and say, all right, guys, what did we think of that? What did we think? 
uh, which was exciting, and uh, you know, and we could kind of switch back when they went in. So if they do have any technical difficulties, hang out here. We'll uh, we'll keep you, keep you up to speed. We'll be interacting with you guys. Also, after the show is over, I got those promos. I got some cards to give away. I already teased one. Uh, maybe a little stuff from uh, Imperial Assault. Maybe some some stuff from some other games. We've got some old X Wing 1.0 stuff. Now I do want to caution you guys. If you guys win any of these promos, because I'll be giving them out in the live chat. Uh, so I'll, I'll give you guys keywords for specific games if you're looking for stuff. But uh, for things that are given away, I do mail those out using the postal service, which is extremely slow right now. I know I've had some people wait over a week for, for envelopes that have not yet arrived. Uh, I've had one like package, larger items take longer to go through. Uh, you know, we're, do, we're giving away a lot of the Life Day stuff from Patreon or on Patreon right now, all the stuff that was unclaimed from the 12 Days of Life Day, which was my big series of giveaways in December. All that stuff is being given away on Patreon right now. And when that stuff gets mailed out too, that's it's going to take a while. Uh, so, so you know, that, just, just be patient with the Postal Service. They're still backed up from holiday stuff. I had one package take nine weeks to arrive. So, uh, you know, things are, are very, very slow. But... You'll get it. Envelopes are a little bit quicker, I think. So uh, so that's good. All right. So uh, I want to hear what you guys think. We're over 400 people in the chat right now. So thank you all for hanging out with me today. We are going to watch this stream. And uh, as soon as they get started in about 16 minutes, and uh, we'll be looking for some pretty cool stuff. I, uh, I do expect they'll talk a little bit about uh, Armada as far as the four ships that were just announced. I don't think they'll get too far into that uh, as far as Armada, though. I know a lot, a lot of people are talking about the Lucre Hulk. Um, it's possible they could say like, "Hey, we're looking at you know this, or we're we're planning to develop something like this," but that's still a far cry from actually announcing another expansion. I don't think there's any more expansions for Armada that are like like in in like on the boats right now or anything that's like close enough. I don't think they they have like preview images to give us anything else for Armada just yet. I could be wrong though. Uh, I have been wrong before, but usually I'm right. So I, I think at best for Armada, what I'm hoping to find out is who do they have working and who is the team. I would love to get an introduction to the new development team for Star Wars Armada, as well as the other games too. I want to know who's also working on X-Wing. X-Wing, I do expect we will get some previews and spoilers for X-Wing. I think X-Wing is one of the going to be the bigger games that we get news of today because there are three more Aces packs that have not been officially announced yet that were certainly teased and we certainly know a little bit about them due to Lion Rampant uh, giving away uh, information that just simply shouldn't be given away. All of that stuff has been teased through Lion Rampant and we know that that stuff is coming. So we know that there is uh, a Rebel uh, you know, Phoenix Squadron or uh, uh, that's basically coming. We also know the, the Sky Strike Academy pack is coming for the Empire as well as... The, uh, the, the, the the Fugitives and Collaborators pack, which is presumably a Scum Aces pack. Uh, I do expect those to actually be announced today. I also think that uh, Legion will see the formal announcement of the new two heavy expansions that are coming for the Rebels and the Empire. That being that Lat Le, the uh, Imperial helicopter that we've seen in a little bit in the Clone Wars, but more prominently in Star Wars Rebels, as well as that AA-5 speeder truck for the Rebel, or for, I'm sorry, for the Empire, and the AA-5 speeder truck for the Rebels. I think that is what we're going to see announced. I don't think we'll see any actual product announcements for Armada, but I will admit to you guys, I am going to hammer them if I give, if given the opportunity uh, about, hey, will you consider making more alternate bases? This is something I want to see for all of the games, but most importantly, Armada, since X-Wing has seen alternate bases and base packs being sold once upon a time back in X-Wing 1.0. They had those new acrylic bases that you could get because sometimes you lose bases, bases break, uh, pieces crack off, and currently for Armada, the only way to get a new base is to buy a whole other ship or have one 3D printed, but the 3D printed ones don't quite look the same, and they're usually white or something like that or have to be painted. They're certainly not translucent, uh, so I would love to see alternative bases, especially for me as a, as a personal request for me because I painted all of my bases white and now I'm regretting that decision and I don't want to dunk, you know, 
150 bases in, in, in Simple Green and scrub them all until they're crystal clear again. So I don't think that would work out too well. But I'd love to be able to do faction-based bases, like maybe get green bases for the Empire or, or orange bases for the Rebels and, and uh, you know, maybe magenta bases for the Republic and blue bases for the Separatists. I think that would be really cool. I think a lot of people would love to do stuff like that. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I see some talk about the Mandalorian in chat or Mandos. Uh, I think that would be pretty cool. I think uh, I think there's a definite chance that we could see something maybe talked about with regards to the Mandalorian because they this isn't anything new exactly. We've seen plenty of stuff from the Mandalorian get teased uh, over the past couple of months. I would say even over the past year. Uh, they I think last year in February it was uh, at the Gamma trade show in Las Vegas. Steve Horvath who was uh, head of studio for I believe Asmodee North America? Like sat down with uh, sat, sat down with the guys from Team Covenant and gave a really lengthy interview talking about Imperial assaults. I don't think we'll hear anything about Imperial assault today, but also talked about things from the Mandalorian. We've we've been told over and over again that stuff from the Mandalorian is coming. Could today be the day we get some actual stuff from the uh, from the Mandalorian? Uh, we've got Sal V says, overpaint those bases black. Easy cover. Yeah, maybe, but at a certain point, then I have, you know, paint on top of paint, and then maybe things don't fit quite so well anymore. I, you know, I, I, I kind of wish I could just take them back to crystal clear too sometimes, but, uh, but that's okay. You know what? It's, it's, it's a, it's a good problem to have again, you know, uh, but it's, it's one of those things, but I would love to have some, especially when you want to photograph them and you kind of want the, like the black in the background to kind of fade through because it's crystal clear background. I kind of like that. Uh, but I want to see how you guys are doing. We're over 500 viewers now. We're doing very, very well. Um, and we st we have uh, just over 10 minutes until everything goes live. Let's talk about some of the giveaways we're going to be doing. So we have, uh, we've got some Gen Con giveaways. Uh, I've got some stuff from Imperial Assault. Uh, how many of you guys play the old, I want to know how many people play the old uh, Star Wars LCG, the out of print game, the Star Wars living card game that no longer exists. By the way, that makes me wonder, is FFG going to announce a new Star Wars card game at some point? Does FFG still have the rights to continue to make new Star Wars games if they're not miniatures games? I am curious of these things and I want to hear what you guys think because I have some promos from the Star Wars living card game that I might be able to give out. If we've got some people who are interested, uh, I do see a couple of folks that are interested because we were going to be giving away promos after the show, uh, we're of course after the show, we're going to be talking about all the cool stuff. I will, I will give away some promos. Um, another thing I want to show you guys, these are pretty cool promos. Some of you might have these already. You know, Armada has done a lot of things, and I've got some promos. And some things will give, be given away. Some things might carry over to Patreon because I love to give away patrons promos as well. Um, but you know, like the, the the larger Armada cards. Here's one that we might give away: a Nebulon B uh, in the old classic size. Um, but a cool thing about the Nebulon B is that what, they came up with a new design for ship cards in the standard size. This is a Nebulon B Escort Frigate um, promo for Star Wars Armada. And I wish that they would have just done the new card sizes like this because you have the upgrades and everything. You have all the information on this size of card as opposed to like putting other stuff on the back. Like this would have been perfect i don't know why they didn't go with this but these are really good cards and these were promos i don't know what year what year these were from at uh, 2018 or 2019 i'm not sure um but yeah the, the small size nebulon b here there's uh something that some, maybe somebody will will walk away with um today so we've got uh, we've got lots of different stuff to give away today. This is going to be a, a a a big celebration day, and so make sure you stay and hang out. We'll be giving those away. Those will be in the chat. Uh, so hang out and stick around with us. Uh, Chandler's hanging out with us today. Um, I feel like those promos were them experimenting with card layouts before changing to standard sizes. I agree with you. I will say that I really have one major problem with and it's not even a major problem i have one criticism of armada 1.5 and that's them putting the upgrades on the back of the cards and because it's not a huge problem and the points as well but you know like i like to use ryan kingston's fleet builder when i'm building fleets and i like to be able to just kind of look through everything and be like oh i'm looking for a ship that has two turbo lasers well let me see which ones do i have you know and and i don't i don't know it's not there the information is on the back and so it makes it so much harder for me the way that i do my list building you know to to go through and and do that and i wonder if that's something that they could consider changing since they've got a workable format right here this is a great format 
for the ship card uh, and put the art on the back, put that on the form. But maybe it didn't pass the test for everybody. I would love, you know what? And honestly, making cards is simple. What if they just made alternate cards um, for people who prefer to have all the information on the front and sold those as an optional buy? You know, it wouldn't be mandatory. It'd just be like an aesthetic thing. I would love for Atomic Mass Games to come up with alternate art card packs that you can buy. Different than promos. You don't have to make them foil or anything like that. I'm curious what you guys think. Would you guys be down for alternate art card packs? We're over 600 viewers right now. This is... Probably one of my biggest live streams so far, which is really cool. I'm so glad to have you guys all with me today. It probably has a little bit to do with the timing. I usually don't run stuff in this particular uh, time slot. I'm usually much earlier or much later with my live streams, but uh, this kind of helps make up for the lack of conventions this year. Hopefully, hopefully by the end of the year or definitely in 2022, we'll be having back to conventions. I'll be able to bring you guys coverage from more in more conventions than I used to in the past. Uh, Gen Con is definitely one that I'm going to be trying to go to. Uh, hopefully, things like Adepticon and, uh, and other conventions like that will be on the list. Also, where we can get some great information and continue to bring you guys more content. And uh, yes. Uh, all right. So we have about six minutes until everything kicks off. Uh, I am going to take this as an opportunity to plug all of my social media stuff uh, before we get started. So check the links in the description below. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Twitter. You probably are already there because I posted links. You may have been pulled in from there, but uh, you can check that out. There's also links to the Teespring store. We got all kinds of cool stuff. We've got uh, shirts uh, for, like, for like the da bad dice prison when your dice misbehave and you want to put them on carbonite. You can bring them in warm or you can bring them in cold. We've got faction specific stuff. If you are an empire player, you're looking for masks or gator necks. We've got all kinds of Star Wars specific stuff too. And that's all kinds of different ways to help support the channel. The Darth Maul gator neck is my personal favorite though. Uh, and uh, yes, yeah, so we got stuff like that. Also, uh, be sure to check out Luxury Playstyle. They are a uh, sponsor of the channel. Uh, be sure to check out Luxury Playstyle. They uh, are giving you a free Crabok token with any order of $35 or more. It's uh, got lightsaber nunchucks on there. It's got the C on the front, the 5 on the back. They're good for the RPG. They're good for all of your games. I, I, I helped them design this particular token uh, and give it my seal of approval because it's got the 5 on the back to mark multiple damage. It's got the C on the front, which can mark critical hits in X-Wing. It can mark your commander in Legion or your flagship where your commander is in Armada. Pretty cool card, and it's got lightsaber nunchucks on it. So check out Luxury Playstyle. Don't forget to use that code CRABOCKVIP. You're going to save 15% off your order there. All right, uh, that is, I think, about... It for right now, um, but yeah, dude, like, let's get back to the speculating. I'm going to get back. We got five minutes to go. I, you know, it, it's it's crazy to me how excited I get off of this stuff. Harry Nick in the house. What's going on, Harry Nick? Hey, you doing, buddy? Uh, glad to have you here. Uh, we are, are just kind of talking about what we expect to see. I do think the big things are going to be the, the three uh, Aces packs for... Uh, for X-Wing, I think we'll see the two more expansions for Legion that have already been leaked, and I think uh, we will probably get less than a whole lot for uh, for Armada, but maybe we'll see. We got a super chat from Brian Houston. He says, hello, Central Florida gaming community joining you. Well, thank you. I'm right here in Central Florida along with you. Uh, so I uh, appreciate having fellow Floridians in the chat. Um he, he, you can't for good news today. I think you. I think he's saying he can't wait for good news today. Uh, I think any news is good news. This certainly wouldn't be announcing a big live stream just to give us bad news. Although it wouldn't it be interesting if they really threw us a curveball and said, "All right, guys, surprise." How many of you guys remember when they did a the hyperspace report that turned out to be only X Wing with 2.0, and all the other gamers that were there for other games were disappointed? We got another super chat in the chat today. It's Dan Calloway with the Dan. Uh, Blue Bird, I think it is. Thanks, Dan, for showing support for the channel. I appreciate you, buddy. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, but yeah, we are uh, we're, we're only a few minutes out, three minutes away from this. You can watch it right here. You can watch it over on the, the Twitch channel if you want to watch Twitch twitch.tv slash Atomic Mass Games. You can watch it in both places. But here is the only place you're going to get those giveaways. We've got some Armada promos. We've got some stuff from the Star Wars LCG. You might have some old X-Wing stuff. We've got all kinds of stuff uh, that, that are, you are eligible to get. And Bleed Green Productions in the house again with the Super Chat. Thanks, Bleed Green for your continued support 
one of my most longest time viewers right there, Bleed Green, Bleed Green Productions, uh, always showing their support. So uh, we appreciate you. Uh, Paperclip42 with the super chat. Uh, wow, you guys are uh, showing a lot of love for the channel today, and I definitely appreciate it. Uh, it's a great way to support the channel. There's also uh, there's also Patreon. There's also a, an additional opportunities to win stuff over on Patreon as well. Um so uh, if, I appreciate that. Also, check out Discord, too. How many of you guys are not yet in my Discord? We have uh, all of the games covered in there. I know there's lots of Discords for lots of different gaming communities, and they're all awesome. Uh, I think my Discord is the only one that has this, uh, specific communities for all three, be that X-Wing, Armada, and Legion. You're all welcome to join it. And if you join today... You get a lifetime membership for free. No charge. We got Super Chats coming in from Sean Mullins. Hello from the troops. The JRTC from Fort Bragg. Hey, how is it going? Uh, big shout out to Fort Bragg. I spent a lot of time at Fort Hood. I actually never made it down to Fort Bragg. Didn't do that. Almost. Almost. They almost talked me into going airborne for a little while, and I'm sure I would have found my way there. No, that was Fort Jackson. We got, uh, <laughs> my wife's like, didn't we go there one time? No, we didn't. We're going to be starting soon, so I'm going to jump over here in just a moment. Uh, AR uh, says, thank you for your content and for your service. Thank you, AR. Uh, D. Ant says, uh, super chatting it up. And then uh, Giro Zeppeli says, what's popping? This live stream is getting ready. They are, uh, right now, they are showing us that they are getting ready to. Let's, let's, let's check them out. Let's check them out. Yeah, they're, they're saying, please stand by. So we are standing by. So if you want to watch, you can watch right here. Uh, Discorded Muffins throws in the hoping for great Armada news, but anything is good. All right, once we start off, I will be turning my mic off so you will not miss anything. You can hang out here. Uh, were, uh, was I am in the military? Were you in the military? I, I can also read very goodly, I promise you. Yes, I, I used to be in the Army. I was uh, in the Army for a while, and uh, you know now I live... In Orlando, Florida, still kind of, uh, still doing, fighting the good fight, but uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, we're almost there. We're they're going to be starting any second now. Uh, let's 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 check in. Okay, uh, they are ready to go. Um, what MOS? Where are you? Uh, I, I I was in, uh, in Signal Corps. Um, it's a, the, the MOS I was didn't exist anymore. It used to be called. A, a, well, I think it's now a twenty five Bravo. Seth says, my roommate Lucas and I watch all your videos. Keep up the great content. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, I, I appreciate you guys uh, all with all of the support today. You guys are uh, really helping out the channel and it is much appreciated. I will talk to you guys soon. I'm going to mute the mic uh, as soon as they start the live stream. And then we are going to be in business because we got lots of stuff. Here it goes. I'm turning my mic off. Hello everyone and welcome to our first Atomic Mass Transmissions Live, the Star Wars edition. I'm Head of Product Development, Will Schick, and joining me today I have the one, the only, our Head of Studio, Simone Elliott. We're very excited to sit with you over this course of the next hour, talk about all the cool things that are coming up for the games, talk about some of our plans for the future, and give you kind of a sneak peek behind the curtains of what to expect for this next year. So with that in mind, let me go ahead and bring in our honored guest, Miss Simone Elliott. Simone, how are you doing? You got to scoot a little bit this way. We had we had this conversation, and then you slouched on me. There you go. Perfect. Hello. How are you doing, Simone? Um, how am I doing? This is great. I am very now in frame. You're super in frame. It's great. And I'm going to shift it back and forth because you know we're we're gonna we're gonna have some fun. I got a lot of buttons to push, so if things kind of slow down, or I do one of these faces, that just means that I'm trying to figure out which button I'm pushing. So don't Great. worry about it. I'm not having a stroke. I'm very safe. Uh, so we'll be good to go. All right. So for those of you who've never seen one of these streams before and don't know about our tomfoolery, welcome to the stream. This is what it's like all the time. Amateurs trying to do professional work and doing it semi-regularly. Uh, only with the stream. Super professional. Not super professional everywhere else, but not on stream. There's too many buttons. My brain doesn't work this way. <laughs> Uh, so let's start off in, why don't you go ahead and just introduce yourself, Simone, and then I will fall suit. I'm Simone Elliott. I am the head of studio for Atomic Mass Games. Previous to this new adventure, I have been with Asmodee FFG for about 10 years. I have managed 
licensing, production, logistics, studio operations. But now I am here doing this. Yes, you are. Mm -hmm. uh, so tell us, what does a head of studio do? A, a lot of spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. A lot, a lot of spreadsheets. Um, my role as head of studio is much more on the business side. I talk to distributors. I talk to production teams. I take care of budgets. I have a lot of feelings about Star Wars. That's basically sums it all up. Nice. Uh, and then just a little bit of background for me. So I am the head of product development for Atomic Mass Games. Uh, and again, my name is Will Schick, for those of you who missed the intro. Um, effectively, my job is all of the fun stuff. So Simone takes care of all the business, business, business side. She does all the spreadsheets that are about numbers and crunching and product uh, mm -hmm. development. Like, you do all the scheduling, working with production. You have a great team of people who work and keeps on track. Uh, sure. And I just get to work with all of our amazing creative team and make cool little dudes and, and gals and aliens and, and monsters and vehicles and, and, and like all the cool stuff. We get to, we get to make all the artistically cool stuff uh, and have a lot of fun. So very excited to kind of be in this new situation where we've got, you know, you handling the side of the business part and really pushing forward on all of the great things that we can do. And then being able to kind of focus more on the things that I love. Um, which specifically are all of like the nerdy gamer things, the, the creative parts and all that. And then getting to show you my work and having you be like, it is acceptable. Acceptable. I, acceptable yeah. is acceptable. good. Acceptable. Yeah, that's, that's typically how it goes. So, um, but no, it's been wonderful uh, thus far to be able to work on these projects and these products um, and to just see Atomic Mass grow over the course of the year. And we've grown in a lot of different ways, including staff-wise. Yes. Um... So, obviously, um, Atomic Mass was a very small studio. There were eight people previously. And what we've done is we have taken some of the FFG staff. We've kind of mashed everybody all together. We are growing in um, hiring some new staff to round out kind of the uh, staff we need to bring you these awesome products. Um, we are very happy to have Luke Eddy, who um, is now the lead developer on Legion, join us and actually one day join us in person when both Luke and I move to Everett and can actually see everyone in the studio. We're, we're cleaning out offices as we speak to make room for your all's arrival. We're very excited. Mm -hmm. uh, global conditions willing, we'll, we'll have mm -hmm. that reunification. There's, there's a whole bunch of snacks in the fridge that I have to throw out and then replace because of uh, you know regulations and rules, but we will have the snack fridge stocked and ready, ready to go for everyone. It is essential. It is super essential. I don't think that you can do any kind of game-related thing without a good amount of snack food. No. Um, so talking about like the next course of the year, obviously, you know, one of the things that we like to talk about a lot on our streams is give people kind of a behind-the-curtains peek into terms of you know, what we're thinking as we develop these characters or we work on these sculpts or how miniature production works. Um, so one of the things that people who may have watched the Atomic Mass streams before know uh, but potentially maybe people who are joining us now may not be aware, is how long these things actually take to bring from concept to fruition. Um, you know, yeah. one of the things is, it's like, okay, it takes anywhere from 18 to 24 months. So when you're talking about things that are releasing this year, you kind of have to rewind the clock at least 18 months and sometimes 24 months to be like, okay, when did that thing actually start getting made? Um, so obviously this puts us in kind of an interesting situation, and I know you wanted to tell people more about what to expect from that. Yes. Um, so if taking what Chick um, has just said in mind, if you think about all of the product that's going to come out in 2021, you have to think about the fact that at about a month, if we go back a 13 months, no, I can't do math today. Um, if we go back to March of last year, while we were still heavily working on all of this stuff, we all like so many other people had to go from working completely in the office to on a dime flipping to work from home. So obviously we were not 100% um, prepared for that. So while there will be delays in 21, I wanted to just clarify like that is related to the switch with the pandemic and having everyone from our development teams, art teams, production teams moving to work from home, which means obviously you didn't get to do as much like great in-person game dev and arguing about miniatures as one would normally do. We so. We can expect some delays. Oh, yes, we did still argue. We made a good, we made a good go of it on teams, and we've we've really developed our mm -hmm. our 
it's almost like working on telegraph and you have to say stop when you're done and wait for the response. <laughs> so it's like, this pose is terrible. He needs to be looking like this. Stop. And then the person responds. You go back and forth. Otherwise, you just it doesn't work. You, call, you talk okay. all over each other. Um, so the other thing that we did want to talk about is kind of in the spirit of the AMG giving you a sneak peek on how things work internally, is talking a little about why the move was made to move the Star Wars lines over to AMG. Mm -hmm. um, I will start by saying I have worked on all of these Star Wars lines since they started with FFG. So a lot of these are my absolute babies. I have worked on so many different aspects and I am so proud and of the work that the FFG team has done over the years on all of these. And um, Chick and I and the rest of AMG are so lucky to be able to work on these now and take them into the future. So um, one of the big focuses was to move the, the games from a board game perspective, which is where FFG's bread and butter is. They are built 20 years on board gaming and give them more a miniatures focus. Um, how you produce, market, develop miniatures games are different than how you look at board games and moving those games lines over meant that AMG could just focus on all of the miniatures games and give it a more, I guess, authentic miniatures feel as opposed to using those same processes, marketing techniques as one would do for a board game. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that really plays into AMG's overall philosophy um, of having miniatures first, which Chick can tell you more about. No, I mean, I feel like you said it all. It's miniatures first, everything else second, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, one of the great things about uh, the kind of the journey of Atomic Mass Games is that uh, the folks who started the studio, myself, Dallas Kemp, uh, Will Pagani, mm -hmm. Marco Segovia, um, we, we effectively came over from the miniature side of the tabletop industry. Uh, we had over 20 plus years of experience combined with that, along with a lifelong kind of dedication and passion to the hobby. So it was really fun to come out and start something from the ground up and really define, okay, this is, this is the miniatures mentality. This is what you do. This is what you look at. Um, and to, to kind of push that forward within Asmodee itself and work with a lot of great people and kind of realize a vision that we had had and a passion that we have had for a long, long time. So one of the big things, hopefully, that folks will see as we move forward with this transition and you start to begin to like kind of um, see the rollout of what AMG will mean to all these great Star Wars games is that we're just going to build on these amazing foundations. Um, everything that we have, you know, we understand the dedication and the devotion. Um, you know, I think a big thing for us is one of the biggest things about miniatures games is they are not just products that you buy, put on a shelf, take off a shelf and play. They are expressions of yourself, they are your artistic talent, they are your passions, they are your mindset, they're kind of your imagination given form in miniature. And so, We've always approached it with the idea that the value is so far beyond just what you get in the box or the plastic itself. It's everything that you put into it, and we want to be sure to value that because I know, you know, over the last 20 plus years I've been doing it, I have massive amounts on a shelf of just things that I've painted, things that I've put my heart and soul into, and knowing that those have value and that people understand that value to me has always been really important. And so that's one of the commitments that we made initially as a studio is that knowing that we're always going to value those things that people put into it. And so building on that, the idea going forward is to take everything that people have and always look to make the experience more exciting, more fun, and better, but always to make sure that people are really enjoying it. And that's different for each game. Um, like a really big one that I'll just spoil that we're going to talk about later is, no, we're not going to make you paint your X-Wing and Armada ships. That's that not what my those... big spoiler. I know, I know. That's the big spoiler. We're done with the stream. Sorry, folks. We're going to end it a little early. Um, <laughs> It's that's not that's not the that's not the telos that's not the the divine goal of those games. It should be. Uh, are we going to explore like giving people options of how you can maybe grab a paintbrush and customize your ships? One hundred percent, absolutely, and we're going to have a lot of fun doing it. But that doesn't mean that everybody's going to want to go down that journey. But I hope that it opens up a door to maybe explore that. So if you want to have your own custom painted X-wing, we're going to give you some ideas on how to do that. If you're already into Legion and you're into the full hobby experience, we're going to continue to build on that. Uh, we're going to make sure that the sculpts are more exciting, more dynamic. We're going to push boundaries as we get better at what we do. And that's a big thing, too. One of my favorite things about working in Atomic Mass is we set out with 
basically one kind of like mission statement in mind, which is there's no finish line, there's only a journey of, of improvement. And we take that very seriously. So even when we feel like we've like hit the top that we can do, we're always looking toward what do we do next? How do we take both the successes that we've had and the mistakes that we've made? Because we make mistakes, like we're people. We're learning too. I didn't start out perfect. I'm sorry, that's just not the way it is. You can fire me after the stream because I've let out the big secret. Uh, but we're always going to learn, and we're always going to take what we've learned, and we're going to try to make that, we're going to apply that to what we do next. We're going to make it better. And that, to me, has been the thing that has kept me into miniatures for almost 25 years. It's been the continued growth that I've seen throughout my hobby journey. And we're going to apply that to everything that we do. We're going to try to make things cool and spectacle. We're going to really hone in on hobby elements as well as the game elements. And in the end, you know, hopefully, like the AMG philosophy of this is a holistic lifestyle hobby and game is going to really rub off and it's going to make great things even greater than they are now. So in true uh, Shick and Simone split out, you get to talk about the heart and the feeling behind everything. And now I'm going to get on to some business stuff. Business. See, this is this is why the job split was perfect. Like It was. Um, so um, I want to go over with you kind of what you can expect from Atomic Mass, not in terms of spoilers. That will be at the end. <gasps> I know. You just spoiled um, the spoilers. You're off book. You're, you're a loose <laughs> cannon, Simone <laughs> Elliott. Loose <laughs> cannon. I told people they weren't gonna have to paint their X-wing Armada ships. Like I don't feel like that was telling people spoilers. <laughs> Whatever, you continue on. You're the boss. Run the show. Thank you. Um, okay, so um, one of the questions that we've got a lot of is when people will see the change in FFG branding to AMG branding. So if we roll back to like the first five minutes of the stream where we talked about, hey, the stuff that was made in that'll be released in 21 was stuff that was made in 20, 2020, rather. Um, honestly, everything that comes out this year will still have the FFG branding. It represents the work that was done by FFG, so that will continue. However, starting in 22, all new product will have AMG branding. And then there's that kind of loosey-goosey part in the middle where things get reprinted. And as they get reprinted, they will have AMG logos that will just be kind of a rolling process. So you'll see a mix of that on the shelves as product moves forward. Mm -hmm. The biggest change that you're gonna see right now is that starting, I'm gonna say today or tomorrow, cause I don't remember what was planned. Um, all social posts will start originating on AMG channels. And I'm sure we have all of those listed on our beautiful brand new Star Wars end card at the end of here. So please like subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Um, so the for the website, we won't we will be launching a new website in the second half of the year. There's gonna be an interim where some stuff is still posted on the Fantasy Flight website. We've got to kind of work out how the logistics of all that are going to work. But um, your main focus, if you're trying to get news about us, is definitely to follow us on those social channels because you're gonna see so much more on social as we get into more painted minis and more focus on the hobby and all of that will show up on our social channels. I should also talk about how this is not just our first Wednesday Star Wars live stream. I believe that starting next week, one Will Schick is going to be live streaming at this very time every Wednesday. Is that, that true? That is correct. Not only am I going to be live streaming, but we're also going to have John Schaefer, the marketing manager for the Star Wars lines, uh, X-Wing, Legion, and Armada. He's going to be doing a live stream on Fridays at, I believe, 1 p.m. Pacific as well. Correct. Confirm that for me. Yes. To, um, uh, Wednesdays and Fridays for Star Wars. Yeah, so we're going to have a lot of fun in those streams. Again, these are going to be very hobby-focused. We're going to be talking a lot about uh, ways to improve hobby skills, techniques that we use. We're going to just jam and talk about uh, characters, design philosophies, things like that. Um, John is really going to be going into, if you uh, are just starting picking up a paintbrush, how do you approach it? How do you improve your skills if you're intermediate? That kind of thing. Um, it's also going to be a great opportunity for us to do even more spoiler content in terms of showing off the new miniatures that are coming. Uh, we always like to paint things before they, they hit the shelves, um, just to show people what to expect when they get their hands on them, that kind of stuff. So 
Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have we're going to have a blast. I think we're going to do some other fun things as well as the restrictions start to lift. Obviously, we like to play games every once in a while on stream. Uh, I'm sure that will become something that as we can safely interact together across the tabletop, um, that we'll see some more of and, and all that stuff. So it's it's the beginning of something hopefully very beautiful and really fun. We have a blast doing it um, before, and I can't wait to add Star Wars to the mix as well. Yeah, and you'll get a peek inside of all of our homes because we will just be streaming from our our homes, you will get to know Schick's laundry room very well. Which I am not in right now, by the way. <laughs> I did come to the official studio for this, but my lawn, drun my lawn dungeon, which I like to call it, mm. is uh, is the most important bit of the streams. Yep. Um, also, so when we get to the spoiler part um, at the end of the stream here, uh, I should tell you that we're not going to give you a bunch of information, but if you join us, um, at the end of March, I'm looking at March 18th through 20th, we're going to do four days of a ton of streaming, probably like four streams a day. If any of you are familiar with what AMG did during Gen Con, where we just did a bunch of streams, we did talk about art, we did development process, Dallas painted a ton of stuff. We're going to do that. It's not related to any particular convention. It's just our own kind of AMG thing where we'll have so much more information for you. But today is kind of a sneak peek of that stuff. Yeah, so we're going to be doing, like Simone said, all kinds of awesome stuff. We're going to be doing uh, developer hangouts. Where we'll talk about design philosophy and development philosophy for each of the games. If you want to just get to know more about the minds behind Atomic Mass Games, it's a great place to do it. If you want to hang out and paint, see some latest spoilers. Um, I'm sure our marketing folks will have tons of stuff to reveal over the course of the weekend. Even I don't know what they're going to show off, so it should be a pretty good time. We had a blast during Gen Con. And we really want to just own that that whole experience and bring it more often to people as we continue to kind of expand across, you know, continents and, and everything else with the global stuff. So we're going to have a lot of fun, like Simone said. There's going to be a whole lot of content there. So consider this kind of the sneak peek of what's to come in March, where we're going to have a whole lot more opportunity to interact, to talk together, and to just hang out. And um, in March, it will cover all four of our game lines and not just the three we're talking about today. Ooh, yes. Ooh. Um, okay, so my next very official topic is organized play. So um, I'm going to give you a little information. There is going to be a bigger announcement that happens at noon central time tomorrow. Um, I've been working with the team at FFG to just put together a bigger announcement that covers um, organize, competitive organized play for both our studio and their studio, just so we're kind of all on the same page. Um, and that announcement will go up tomorrow, Thursday at noon central. But let me, because I love a spoiler, let me uh, give you a little spoiler on that right now. Um, we have made the, the decision to um, not move forward with a Worlds in 2021. Um, we are just not in a position pandemic wise um, globally to plan something that big. Even if we were able to have a big event in the second half of the year, we would not be able to have all of those smaller feeder events that feed up to it. So what we have decided is to um, uh, have our next Worlds in 2022. Um, obviously, in the second half of the year, we, start, we hope to be able to have those events that can start feeding into that. And we'll have much more information as that develops. And Overall, the goal is to start some smaller store level organized play back up. Um, probably, I'm going to say the second half of this year, maybe a little earlier, depending on your local regulations. Um, and so we'll have some kits coming out. Uh, that's generally it. But Shik is going to talk a little more about the uh, AMG take on organized play. Yeah, so obviously one of the big things that we're inheriting from the great work that FFG did is the amazing kind of competitive side of the organized play for all the Star Wars games. The plan is to continue that as kind of we can as the global pandemic continues to evolve and grow. And as Simone said, unfortunately, that means we're not comfortable moving forward with it for 2021. But we are looking towards the future and making sure that that becomes an integral part and remains an important part of those games experiences. In addition, one of the things that Atomic Mass Games has always been focused on is um, organized play from a player experience or a play experience side. 
What this means really is that in addition to all the competitive stuff that already exists within these games, we're really going to be exploring different modes of play, ways for people to, again, use that value that they've placed into their collections in ways that are fun and evocative of the narrative of the galaxy of Star Wars, um, and just open up new opportunities to explore all of these great miniatures and ships and all of that stuff in new and different ways. Um, a lot of this will be at the store level as we are able to begin offering that. Before that, we're of course gonna be looking at ways to offer that over um, digital content and free online stuff for folks to play at home in case they can't go to a store based on their regional area. Uh, a lot of this stuff we saw a lot of success for over the course of the last year as we were working on our own organized play without the Star Wars games. And we're really excited to bring this whole mentality to the Star Wars games. And we think it's going to be another great addition to the foundations that already exist. Do I get to talk about my hopes and dreams for uh, Legion uh, or organized play? I guess. I mean, I can't stop. I'm going to do a spoiler because I don't even remember if we agreed that I was going to talk about this. I don't think we did. So I can't <laughs> wait to see what this is. Um, I, uh, Sheik and I have been talking about um, doing something that is essentially Vader, uh, Vader down from the Marvel comics, everybody against Vader. I'm super into this idea. And now I've spoiled it. There you go, I guess. So you can expect <laughs> some kind of like super Vader encounter coming to your Legion tables very soon in 2021. I said it was a hope and dream. Oh, uh, hope and dream. I feel and like your hopes and dreams usually turn into reality, so we'll see what that happens. That is a true fact. Okay, so I think that covers all like the business stuff. We can oh. go into spoiler time if that's what we're into. I mean, as long as the marketing folks aren't around to cut your internet, we can we can do whatever you want. There is, I, you're in Everett and I'm at home, so I think we're pretty good. It'd be funny if the internet just cut out on us right now because our <laughs> office has been having problems. All right, uh, so you want to start with X-Wing? I do want to start with X-Wing. See, you got to talk about how we're not going to have you paint and assemble your own X-Wing, which means I get to talk about assuring everyone that there are no current plans for an X-Wing 3.0. We are happy with the state of the game, but again, we want to see what additional experiences we can bring in, um, maybe something co-op. Um, yeah, we are exploring what that is but I can promise you we are not in a, we're not right now furiously working on a third edition. Um, with that said, we will do our regular points updates and updates to the app over the next, um, I don't know exactly when the next one is scheduled. That seems like something I should have written down already. Um, but you guys will see that kind of on a regular schedule. Do we want to do reveals? Or is there we anything did, else I, before I gave, you do a reveal? I gave you the full camera. So should we check out this Phoenix cell? <gasps> oh, wait. Hold on. They're, they're actually on the real Phoenix. They're on the marketing Phoenix cell image that I stole. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. So now that they've seen that coolness... Now do your fancy reveal, because it's not just a picture. We have it for reals, folks. That's right. It's real. It's in our house. So, yes, I went into the office to steal all of the stuff that I'm going to show you. Um, so, yes, this is the real thing. I believe I'm going to try to look at the card we just showed you. Today. I haven't shown them the card yet. <gasps> so you show them some cards. All right, it's up. Wing, which I will show you because I also have that on my desk. Um, she is the most skilled B-Wing pilot to date, as is absolutely appropriate for Hera. There, that's it. That's your cool card reveal for this one. All right. So the next one that we have up is going to be the Sky Strike Academy. Simone, please show us the box. <laughs> Look, oh, I am being told out that my audio cuts out when Chick puts up other images. It does. Look, we're learning new things all the time. I didn't know that. Now we do. So Now we know that I can only talk when I'm on screen. Is that what I'm hearing, BK? <laughs> All 
I'm assuming so. Okay, Sky Strike Academy. Perfect. Let's show them the card, shall we? Thanks, BK. Boop. It was probably the... You weren't on screen so nobody can hear you, oh, so you've got to start okay. again. I just thanked BK for telling me only to talk when I'm on screen. Great, you missed the whole thing. So, Gideon Hask, um, I am fairly certain that Fantasy Flight Games is the number one producer of Gideon Hask art in the entire world. We have portrayed him in so many places. He is, of course, from Battlefront. Um, and there was his fine oh. card at Inferno 2. And then the card went over your face. There we go. <laughs> I got it figured out, people. I'm learning on the fly. I told you. This is what happens when we don't rehearse. This is what happens when amateurs do professional work. This is just the that way that works. That is true. So what are we looking at now? What are we going to look at now? I'm going to I'm going to say that we should look at the Fugitives and Collaborators box. <gasps> so you're going to go away for like two seconds because I don't want to put it over your face because that would be weird. I appreciate that. I'll just chill. But maybe. Wait, maybe we can be really fancy. Oh, it's kind of small, but I think it'll work. Watch this. Now you can talk about it, and it'll be on screen. Are we sure? I think so. Okay. I'm not entirely sure. So are you looking at Fugitives and, Cla and you Collaborators? You are. Yeah. I assume not Kanan's card, because again, I can't actually see what's happening. No, but I could I could put Kanan's card up there. How do we put Kanan's card up there? OK, you got to give me a second. You're moving I'm so fast. So patiently. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Um, with Kanan, this is going to bring the first light side Jedi, Jedi to the Scum and Villainy faction. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, and this represents him kind of post-Order 66 while he's in his kind of, as his title says, Lost Padawan phase. Mm. 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 As a box, but I don't know if or you tell no, me. No, put the, put the box on. I'm not even going off the camera with you anymore. I've like figured this out. I have mastered okay. a new skill. I am so proud. And look at this fine box. It's pretty cool in these platform boxes. I think that's the end of my X-Wing spoilers. I, I think that is everything that you told me that you'd stolen from the office, so. <laughs> that's true. I did go in with like a big Ikea bag and just take a bunch of stuff, so. All right. Well, should we move on to the Armadas then? We should absolutely move on to Armada. All right. So, Show us the first cool thing that you stole. Show us the first cool thing it is absolutely in, oh God, this is where I hate doing this part. Hey, look, it's the invisible hand. <gasps> look, okay, does that make it better? I can't even tell. Um, this is Grievous' ship. I am super excited to uh, show this to you all. It is beautiful. Um, in case we want some size reference, I do have my own chimera that I can kind of maybe get in shot. Nope. This way. Does that work? I can't even tell. They're about the same length. That's what I can tell you. Um, yeah, this is Grievous' ship. It is um, the invisible hand. I am super excited about it. I like it now because as you talk, I just slowly like put up the cards and stuff so that people can... Actually, see what's going on here. Oh, great! We actually do have cards. We do. <laughs> I, I stole all the cards. You told me what you stole. I stole some things. It was very exciting. It was. Um, do you want to show the card for the Venator, which unfortunately <gasps> I did not steal from the office? I can. I can show the card for the Venator. Hold, please. Awesome. I don't think we want it like completely over your face, so we're gonna put it right here. I would like that. everyone to know that the phrase hold please is the thing I maybe say the most often and what everybody picks up from me. So you now have a Venator class uh, ship card on screen with you. That's it. That's that's the spoiler. That's, that's it. I, I don't have a ship here, so that's it. That's well, the exciting moment. You, you can't bat a thousand, so that's okay. That's okay. Uh, Simone, do you have approximate release dates for these things? The chat would love to know. Um, I feel like BK does. I feel like BK or Schaefer does, but I could absolutely bring that up, I'm sure. I'm sure I had that open just moments ago and closed it because there was too much stuff on my desktop. Please hold. 
Yeah, we're doing this live too. We're we're literally <laughs> told the chat to hold live. This is perfect. This is perfect. Um, okay, for these fine Armada products, we are looking at Friday, April 16th. Now I have everything. Oh, God, I shouldn't put that. Uh, you, you can't see that screen anyway, so. Friday, <laughs> no. April 16th. <laughs> I think you have one more Armada ship to show? I have two more Armada ships. Two more Armada. I only have one card left. No, I have two cards left. Uh-huh. <laughs> you want to do the Pelta? Oh, is that what we're doing? Yeah, we can do that. It's the one I picked up. We, we can do whatever you want. We can do whatever you want. There we go. I have this. Look at this. Well, oh, okay, wait, this way, Pelta. This is the Pelta, and Schick has a card about it. I, it's already up. I'm oh, like- God. all the things I want, sorry, I forgot. This is not even my final form, Simone. <laughs> That's it. Now you want to do the Rekus? Re God, why did I pick the one that I cannot pronounce? I don't know. Why did you pick it? It was your choice. You did this because yourself. I stole everything that I could find. The recusant. Rec recusant. Recusant. One of those two things. So here, here is this amazing kind of wasp kind of dude here, and he has a card as well. Wasp? Like, is he really like? Does he throw know. barbs at dinner? Is that why he's waspy? It's the wasp waste. Oh, okay, the waspy waste. We had a conversation about that earlier too. We did. That's why that word is stuck in my head. Got it. All right. So those are the big Armada spoilers. Aside from that, we're not at a point where we're ready to talk about more Armada, but I wanted to show you these fine things that'll be coming out in April. That's right. Mm -hmm. Super fine things. The finest of things. The finest, the finest of wares, the perfectest of things. <laughs> All right, so exciting stuff. I, myself, have also stolen a couple of things from the office to show off. Um, I was unable to procure cards for them, but I do have, uh, I do have some pretty cool plastics to show, some physical products, uh, which I assembled myself as part of the test thing and we thought it would be fun to show. So everyone knows about Lando and Agent Callus. Um, the kind of the next cool things that we wanted to reveal on this stream uh, just to kind of whet everybody's appetite for what's coming, are two new vehicles for Legion. And I believe that Simone has boxes if she wants to bring those up. I do. Are we, should we do this fine speeder truck first? Sure, let's do the AA5 speeder truck. Hold on, the box is open. I don't want the things to fall out. You cannot no longer see me because this box is so huge. Look at this fine speeder truck, which I believe Schick has assembled one of. I have assembled a number of these, actually. Uh, so <laughs> let me let me take the helm, Simone. Anything you say won't be heard now. You're going off camera. I'm sorry. I don't know how to fix that yet. <laughs> all right. So here is the AA5 in all of its beautiful glory. So this is a it's a nice chonky boy, and the turret is optional. So there are two different weapon options that you can put on top of it as you assemble it. Also, the doors will open and close, and just to show you, it has, in classic fashion, a fully detailed interior. So you can do all of your hobby dreams and wishes. Uh, people are asking for the base. I don't have the base with me, so I can't actually answer that, that specific question. There you go. So this is the AA5. It was a super blast to assemble. The engineering is really smooth and great. Um, again, I kind of left the top off so that we could always access in there and see what's going on. You can do the doors open or closed as most vehicles in the Legion line allow you to do. If they're transports, this is a transport and it does uh, work for the Rebels and provides them a nice little transport option. We're going to be talking more about the design philosophies behind this little fella uh, along with a bunch of other more Legion stuff during that March stream when we have our amazing lead developer Luke Eddy on. And we're just going to be discussing a lot of what to expect as to the whys, the hows, and the whats for several of the new Legion releases that are upcoming. Simone says she has a base, so let's go to Simone. <gasps> there you are. There's the base. Hold on. Um, I have heard that people would like to know release stage, which I will now tell you. I will do them when we have finished all the reveals. I will go down the full line and give you some release dates, which I am jotting down right now. 
Simone, why don't you go ahead and show the other box that you stole <laughs> before I show them my my beloved my beloved whale son, as I like to call him. <laughs> Look at this fine lapped LE, which I think is on screen properly. It is, and if you notice, it does have two kind of <gasps> two different faction icons. That's right, the Lat LE, as many people uh, already assumed, does work for the Empire. It also works for the Galactic Republic. And my fine, lovely whale son, as I call him, because I thought he looked like a whale as I assembled him. Super awesome uh, miniature to put together. It has, of course, the fully modular doors. You can have them open and closed. It has the fully detailed interior, which this one I did not leave the top off of because it doesn't really work. Uh, um, just a phenomenal build experience. I was really impressed with all of the work that the FFG engineers, now the AMG engineers, did on this really impressive miniature. Of course, it is a transport and does have two different pilot options. And I do have the base for this one, so I will put him on the base and slide him over. So there's the view that you'll probably get for the most often when you're playing the games with them. And those. So in the coming weeks, we will be doing some really fun stuff on the streams with those two vehicles as well, kind of showing some tips and tricks on how to get some paint on them in different ways. We also have our esteemed ministers painter, Brendan Roy, working right now on painting the studio versions of these, and that is something that you're gonna be seeing a lot more of as the year progresses. We're gonna be getting all of these great miniatures painted uh, as studio miniatures so that we can do photography, we can do really awesome shots with them, and we just hopefully inspire and, and build on uh, the great work that's been done in the sculpts and all of that process so that everyone out there can see how amazing these miniatures can look in setting the stage of your own Star Wars battles. You're back, Simone Elliott, so whatever you'd like to say, the floor is yours. I'm back to remind you to talk about rules forums. <gasps> rules forums. Yes. One of the big things that's going to be happening in the next couple of weeks is that we are going to be opening a Star Wars rules forum for Legion specifically to start, and then we're going to move that forward with X-Wing and Armada going forward in the next few months. We have one currently at Atomic Mass Game for one of our other product, which I won't mention on this stream because that's not what this stream is about. Uh, however, this is going to be the new place for all the Legion questions. It's going to be a great repository for questions that have been asked, very common questions. It's going to be searchable. You can set up an account. You can ask your rules questions, and our developers will review the question and then post the answer uh, up on the forum. So this will hopefully become a really great resource for everyone, both old and new in the Legion community as the games continue to grow, to go in and get the official answers right away in a very easy-to-search format. Of course, this won't replace us updating things like the errata documents and the FAQs going forward so people can download those and print them for their use if they want to. But if you have a burning question about Legion rules, don't know how something works, you can go to these forums, the uh, forums.amg.com, sign up, We'll open up the Star Wars ones again in the next couple of weeks for Legion, and then we'll be progressing forward from that. It's been really, really useful for our other gaming communities. We're very excited to bring this to the Star Wars communities of gamers. We think that it's going to be a really positive benefit uh, in bringing in new players, making sure that everybody has the most up-to-date information and can find everything as they need without having to search through different threads, emailing, all of that different kind of stuff. So we're very excited to bring that forward, and that will replace all of the rules, questions, forms that we have previously used from FFG and Atomic Mass Games, this will be the one-stop shop for all of your questions when it comes to game rules for any Star Wars games as we continue to open up new forms for each game. So, I have been told by the amazing BK that people would like to know the release dates, so I'm going to go through those. Woo! So, whew, I know. For X-Wing... So we have those three squadron packs, which are Phoenix Cell, uh, Fugitives and Collaborators, and Sky Strike Academy. And those will be releasing on March 26th. Then for Armada, we have those four ships, which I believe to be Invisible Hand, Recusant, the Pelta, and the Venator, which I did not have a copy of. Those will be releasing um, April 16th. And then for these two fine Legion vehicles, we're looking at May 20th. 
That's it. Those are the those are the those are the dates. There you go. Nailed it. Prices. Cool. See, I am. Uh, prices is totally a thing that you will find on the internet, friends. <laughs> <laughs> There's only so much info she's willing to to part with on this. Yes. It's only all so right. much scribbled on these post-it notes all over my desk. Well, if that's it, I think that we've run through the list that you gave me. So unless there's any surprise things you want to bring up, we've gone through our sweet stolen booty. We've <laughs> given people a taste of what's to come, hopefully. Uh, of course, be sure to tune back in next Wednesday as we kick off our regular twice-a-week Star Wars stream. I'll be hosting on Wednesdays. John Schaefer will be show hosting on Fridays. Uh, it's going to be a great place to continue to talk about things like we've done here. Uh, provide insight and views towards the future. We're going to be doing some really fun stuff with that. We're going to be kicking things off hobby-centric, so I'm probably going to wind up painting one of those two vehicles that I just showed you, uh, as well as beginning my own journey into building a Republic Army for Legion. Uh, and we're going to be walking through that process as well. That could be really fun, uh, both for me and hopefully a little entertaining for you as I fumble my way through it. So with that said, uh, be sure to check out all of our social medias for all of the latest and greatest information. As Simone said, all of the Star Wars information for all three games is going to start becoming regular on our social medias first and then retweeted through the FFG site for people who may have missed the memo that it has shifted over. And of course we have a lot more information and cool things coming your way. Be sure to check out uh, March when we do our big Atomic Mass game stream extravaganza. It's going to be a blast. We're going to have a lot more to talk about, a lot of time to hang out and chill and just get to know each other a lot better and look at the vision of the games going forward and where we're going to be taking these into the next year and the years after that. So with that, thank you so much for joining us, y'all. I hope that you had a good time. Uh, I hope you're as excited about the future as we all are. We can't wait to get started, and we will see you on the next one. Goodbye. I had a great time. I think I'm going to crash more streams. That, I can do it now. I can do it now. We have the technology. And you are always welcome to crash any stream you want, Simone. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all. Goodbye. Well, that was pretty wild. I think I called most of what they were going to announce uh, almost exactly, which was pretty interesting. Uh, we are going to go through all of this. Um, what I'm going to do, before I start going through it all, I want to give you guys a chance to use the bathroom. <laughs> so we're going to take like two minutes, or, uh, while, and I'm going to be putting these images together. Uh, so if you need to do that, go ahead and uh, get yourself a... About them. We still got promos to give away. We have quite a bit to talk about. Uh, we're going to go for a little bit longer. Um, whew. Uh, I, I, to be fair, my predictions weren't really that much of a good guess because a lot of it was really based on Lion Rampant leaks. I mean, heck, I even called the date of the Armada release stuff before they did. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, they have a lot of information to deal with, and I only have to look at it from a fan's perspective. So it's much easier for me to remember dates for game, my favorite games uh, when I have to remember so little. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start putting together some of these images because we've got a lot of images to put together. Oh boy, yeah, this is. Uh, I'm I'm excited. All right, we've got uh, we've got. Let's see, let's see, let's see. We've got. Uh, I got to find my my images because I have to try and import them into here in real time, which is always fun. And let's, we're going to do this. We're going to add, da, 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 da. all right. I think we are just about ready. Okay. Let's see. Is it working? Is it working? Yes. Yes. It's, the images are working. So we're able to start doing this. Where did, where do you find this live stream? It was right here. Uh, they were actually streaming on Twitch. Uh, and that is over now, uh, but the beauty of watching it here is you can rewind, or you can just catch the cliff notes, you can rewatch this stream once it's all over, you can just go back and rewind it again, it'll also stay up on demand, so you can watch it all right here if you want to. I am sure Atomic Mass Games will eventually uh, upload some of their other stuff. Um, I want to say something though, alright, X-Wing players, X-Wing players, if you're out there, um, when Simone was holding up these boxes... And this may be something they edit out of their live stream when they upload it up to... Uh, I, 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 Look, we're only human. People make mistakes, right? But she's holding up this box. And and she's holding it up. And uh, here, I'm going to grab... Like, I'm, I'm holding... I'm going to hold up the Darth Maul face mask, right? Um, the gator neck. She's holding it up like this. The problem is the front cell is reflective. So you can see her, her monitor. And I thought I saw a gunboat from X-Wing. 
on there. So I wonder if that's like one of the next things to get reprinted. All right, I wonder if they're working on another wave of reprints for 2.0. I thought I saw a gunboat, or a, maybe it was a lambda. Now, granted, I'm looking at a refraction of an image bent through a like a, a maybe a even slightly curved surface and everything like that. But I'm curious if any of you guys, you eagle-eyed X-wing viewers, saw the gunboat uh, in that particular. Uh, you know, I think it was on the second one that she opened. I think it was in the Sky Strike Academy one. But uh, but yeah, I, I I don't know if that's really the thing. I, there'll definitely be some like enhanced. You know, but the problem is if we do that, then they're like gonna want to give us more stuff. Like I don't I don't know how much I really want to bite the hand that feeds. You know, in this case, because I'm like I, it's cool of them to show us the packaging and stuff. I'm like, man, they have these in hand already. That's really cool. You know, but uh, but you know, like. Come on, shoot! You know, send me over some review copies. I'd love to do a, like a live unboxing, and you know, before it's even up for pre-order, uh, that would be pretty cool. But um, but let it. Legionnaire says, "God, please let it be the gunboat. The scalpers need to burn in hell." Yeah, no, I I think it was a gunboat, and there might have been other stuff in there too. I, I I was I'm trying to grab screenshots the whole time it's going on, and also write and take notes, and you know, so I missed a lot of the chat that was going on, but and also interact with those guys and ask questions and. They didn't get uh, many of the questions. They, as much as they do all this stuff, they don't answer a whole lot of questions. And I would love to see, if Atomic Mass, if you are watching, I'd love to see some actual, like, ask me anything type of videos. Uh, I would love to do some interviews with you guys, too. And, uh, you know, I've done interviews with FFG before. I know the routine. You know, I'm not going to ask, like, hey, tell me all the new upcoming products, you know, and stuff like that. But there's a lot of, I think, really good questions that uh, would be good to get answered, you know. Um, and, and they did address that a little bit. They talked about organized play. We're going to run through all the cool stuff that they showed us. Um, uh, they talked a little bit, like, and like we said, um, the initial... Uh, the, the initial part of the video was a lot about the expectations, the process. Um, it did say it takes anywhere between 18 and 24 months for development. And these are things that, I mean, I mean I, I've been in, in all of this long enough to know that that's, that's a realistic goal. We're not going to see Atomic Mass games on these products until 2022. So all of the stuff that comes out, you're going to be looking at it still saying Fantasy Flight Games because a lot of stuff was still in the pipe. You don't just, you know, turn off, like change the pipe from one one company to another and then just, and then start. You know, like the, the, all the stuff was still in the flow. So like there's still water in the hose. It, it, maybe that's a strange analogy. So, you know, we'll just, we'll, we'll move on to the next topic. But yes, you're going to still, all the stuff that they showed you today is all stuff that's going to be coming out this year. All of that will still have the Fantasy Flight Games logo on it. We did get release dates going all the way out until May. And it makes me wonder, what about after May and for the rest of 2021? What other things can we expect to come out that may still have the Fantasy Flight Games logo on it. That's one of the things that I definitely wonder about. I wonder, wonder, wonder. I guess we will have to see. Um, they did say uh, a lot of things. Like no X-Wing 3.0, which is, I think, a big thing that some people were wondering about. I think it was a question that was worth asking, but I didn't have the realistic... I didn't realistically think that they were going to do that, but I did admit that there was certainly a chance. Uh, because there, there's always a chance that they're going to do X-Wing uh, 3.0 at some point, right? Um, also, don't... Uh, Stay tuned because we still have some giveaways to give away. We've got uh, Nebulon B Classic, Nebulon B New. We've got uh, some Imperial Assault and Star Wars LCG giveaways as well. Uh, I'll tell you how you can get those. Uh, and uh, usually you're going to get those through. We're going to do most of those through the chat. We may also do some in Discord also. So if you guys aren't already, be sure to click the links in the description below. You're going to find a link to my Discord server. I will probably... Uh, post uh, a, a picture of like a, a promo, and then maybe you, you you like it with an emoji or something like that, and I'll announce it, uh, you know, later that day or something like that. Like that's you know we're we're gonna do a, actually that's a good idea. I should do that. I should do. I'll do that soon. I'll make a separate channel. I'll do that immediately after the stream for at least uh, at least one or two of these promos because we got so many to do. But uh, but yeah. So all right. That being said, we are going to uh, go through some of the other information that we got. Um, no change to pre-painted options for X-Wing and Armancha. And, and, and Armancha. And Armada. Armancha is the new game. Armancha. It's where you eat the pieces. Mancha, mancha, mancha. No. Um, That's a tasty Star Destroyer. Now with nacho cheese flavor. So uh, <laughs> we are... Uh, no, but they did talk about... Uh, this was meant to be kind of a hint, but I take this as... A, it was a strong hint that they're looking at... 
options for people who want to paint their ships. That sounds to me like unpainted options for X-Wing and or Armada. And I think that is a fantastic option because I am somebody who wants to manually paint my ships. And I think that's a really cool way. Look, uh, the, who else did this? Uh, uh, WizKids did this with their Deep Cuts line. As somebody who owns an airbrush and has no problem painting big gray Star Destroyers that I don't have to worry about brush strokes on, I love this as an option. I think um, a lot of brush painters, too, will enjoy it, especially for X-Wing. I think there's a lot of people that want to get extra levels of detail that don't want to have to strip a model first and all of that stuff. So... Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think it's a cool option, uh, but I'm curious what everybody is going to think about that being an optional buy. I, I, I don't know how much difficult, and, and I think a lot of people are worried because they think if you make an unpainted option, does that take away from production capability that you might otherwise have? And will that lead to, hey, the, I couldn't find any more uh, gunboats, so I had to buy an unpainted gunboat, but I, you know what, well, that's fine. And then people showing up with unpainted ships to tournaments, and I wonder if that might eventually escalate into something that people would get upset about. I don't know. Then these are things that I think were worth discussing. Um, so uh, they did say they're going to continue to work on enhancing the sculpts and pushing the boundaries and just getting better and better. And, you know, the, the, the general positive stuff I think that you can expect to have. Um, but starting tomorrow, AMG will also be the social media hub for all of the new Star Wars news coming out. AMG will have all of the Star Wars tweets and uh, Facebook posts and Instagrams and all of that stuff. Fantasy Flight Games won't be uh, giving you, like, Star Wars news from Fantasy Flight Games anymore. So when you see like a tweet or a, or a Facebook post or whatever that's announcing, you know, the maybe the the, the AA5 speeder tank or something like that, uh, that th those things in the future will be coming from AMG. Uh, so there, this is a re kind of represent, represents the official beginning of them kind of taking the torch from FFG's hands, and it's starting with social media, and it also started today with this Twitch stream. Uh, so they're also going to be moving forward with a new website. Uh, there's, they didn't talk a whole lot about that, but they did mention that there will be a new rules forum going up. They've talked about that a little bit for Marvel Crisis Protocol, but they talked about it specifically today that they're going to be doing a Legion rules forum first for the Star Wars game. Uh, games and that is going to be like a message board where you can go ahead and ask your questions and as, treat it as a repository of rules questions and information uh, but I don't think they want it to be like a casual chat type of thing they don't want to police personal attacks on each other and all that kind of stuff I think they're trying to limit they don't want to hire a forum moderator and all that stuff and I think that's where the closure of the FFG forums which we just talked about in this morning's video uh, and, you know, and they want the community to be the casual chat and again that's one of the reasons I've been talking about my discord so much because there's a lot of people that now don't have a place to go and talk about this stuff that's one of the reasons i mean discord doesn't cost you guys anything i i pay a little bit for it but it's out there it's just a free re a resource for you guys so it's one of the things uh that is in there can we see the other packs yes i'm gonna i'm gonna move forward to, i'm getting with all the admin stuff and the other stuff they did first um they did talk uh about it, it sounded like there may have been a new game planned but i'm gonna have to go back and uh, talk about that again because they said uh, all four games as opposed to just three, uh, and they wait. They said it in a weird way that made it sound like, wait, is there a fourth game planned? And I think they were just talking about Marvel Crisis Protocol in March. They'd be talking about all of the games and not just the Star Wars games. So there's some big news coming forward in March where there's going to be another big kind of announcement uh, and uh, maybe more spoilers and, and things like that. Um, and I think that's going to coincide with the Gen Con thing that's going on in March. Gen Con's doing a big showcase. Uh, thing in in March. Um, what's going on, everybody in chat? We have uh, we got a lot of viewers right now. We still got over 900 viewers. So if you're still watching, still hanging out with us, thank you guys. We are going to get to the giveaways in a little bit. I'm going to run through the news, and uh, tomorrow morning I'll have probably a more of a, a, a formal video kind of going over uh, a lot of this same information. All right. So uh, we also they talked about worlds. They're not going to be a worlds this year, even if uh, even if it's safe by the end of the year. There's just not enough time to to kind of plan and set all that stuff up, and also give players enough you know real life tournament experience to kind of build into worlds. But they are going to do worlds in 2022. They're also looking at doing narrative events like Atomic Mass has done before, which could be a really fun thing. One specific that was talked about that isn't. It sounds like it's not finalized yet, but it's definitely on Simone's wish list, and I think it's now it's going to have to happen. Is a Vader down scenario for something like Star Wars Legion where uh, everybody it goes up against only Darth Vader from the, the Darth Vader comic books it was a pretty cool thing where Vader pretty much went up against a 1600 point army of rebels and just killed them all 
Uh, and it was it was pretty awesome. So uh, so yes, yeah, so, uh, so that would be a really fun like basically ultimate encounters how you see them for uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol now are probably going to come to other games including Star Wars Legion and I think that would be a really fun alternative way to play as a content creator I l- I enjoy that because that also gives me new battle report uh, options I think that could be a really fun way to do that and I wonder if my AI system could actually integrate with an ultimate encounter like that I think that would be a really fun way to maybe have you at home during quarantine have uh, an option to say hey how would you like to play as an ultimate superpower to Darth Vader going up an army of AI rebels I think that could be fun uh, and hopefully and also on crabock.com my website we have uh, free AI systems for both Legion and Armada as well as a whole bunch of other content so check that out too uh, if you're interested in being able to do some solo play these are free expansions for you guys to just download and go Uh, All right, so what else do we have to talk about? We also have uh, no plans for X-Wing 3.0. We talked about that already. They showed us some Armada stuff, and then they showed us some uh, Legion stuff as well. Um, and I think we're going to jump into... Our, all right, so let's let's talk about everything they showed us. Uh, Phoenix Cell is going to be two A-Wings and a B-Wing. And it does look like in all of these ace packs for Legion, it is two uh, of one ship and one of another. Now, we, these are straight out of Star Wars Rebels. Uh, of course, everybody is probably wondering, is that B-Wing going to have that super laser? It probably will have some kind of super laser. I think I think there's a chance that they could do a super laser like that that is not legal for tournament play. This is my guess. My guess right now is that the B-Wing will have a fun or epic format type of upgrade that it can take that is not legal for tournament play. I think uh, the introduction introduction of those hyperspace rings that we saw as an optional fun thing to do for either kitchen table games or epic scenarios and, and, and you know huge epic format games and stuff like that. Uh, that's a fun thing to do, and that since a, a weapon like that that can one shot anything uh, might be a little overpowered for tournament gameplay, but it'd be a really fun thing for a scenario. I think they could do that. Maybe it's a fifty point gun, you know. Maybe it's a hundred point upgrade or something crazy like that. But I think, you know, my guess right now is that that will be a thing that comes with this pack. Some fun, non-tournament play stuff. Maybe that will be a trend going forward, too, is more fun upgrades that aren't necessarily legal in tournament play. Um, And here we go. We got the close-up view of these. And, uh, you know, again, the same stuff. I'm presuming that that B-Wing also has the same moving parts that we saw in the other uh, 2nd edition B-Wings. Although, the fact that they have it standing upright makes me wonder, wait a second, what if they just repainted some of the old 1.0 B-Wings? Hopefully that is a moving B-Wing just like the others. Uh, let's, let's, let's keep going. We've got, uh, and we've got Hera Syndulla here at Initiative 6. So she is the, uh, a true ace in the B-Wing. Which is pretty cool. Yes, B-Wing Super Laser Configuration. Like, oh my goodness, that sounds like that would be really fun. Uh, While another friendly ship at range 1 to 2 defends or performs an attack, you may transfer one of your focus token, evade tokens, or locks to that ship. Uh, so good. So it's a support option, which is pretty interesting. I, I, I think that's that's pretty cool. I don't know if I have too much of a meta analysis for that right now. Uh, it doesn't kind of fit into what I would expect Hera in a B wing to be, which would be more of a, an attack and kill anything. So I think that's all the more reason you're probably going to see some kind of B wing super laser configuration. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so Hera looks well, looks good there. She's going to have an easier time getting target locks on the on the other ships. Uh, so I think she'll be good for that, right? She moves at initiative six, so getting a an, an, uh, target lock on somebody should be no problem then she can pass it to maybe somebody else who's got those torpedoes that just didn't have the initiative to line up the shot and then get the target lock uh for those of you in chat asking about imperial assault no uh we didn't get anything about imperial assault i think imperial assault still counts as a board game uh we're gonna have to probably wait until 2023 until we hear anything about imperial assault because that is what they have talked about uh, we also got Sky Strike Academy spoiled, uh, and and this is kind of one of those scenes where you can kind of start to see some reflections of maybe the tabs she had open. If you go back and re- rewatch the stream, uh, maybe you'll see maybe you'll see some spoilers uh, on the laptop there. 
but uh, but yeah, so we were we we're getting some Bloodwing uh, interceptors and a yellow tipped defender there. There we go. We can kind of see uh, a little difference in this in the in the pinstripe, right? Not exactly the same as the ones that we've seen from X Wing 1.0. So if you still got your 1.0 uh, interceptors, yeah, I mean you, you've now got lots of different uh, custom pre painted interceptors at this point, as well as quite a few different tie defenders. So uh, that is pretty cool. Um, and we did get one uh, pilot card preview. Um, actually, I think, you know, if we go back through these, we'll be able to zoom in and really see what those pilot names are. What were those pilot names? Let me go back. Let's see, I'm going to, I'm going to blow that up a little bit. Uh, Wedge Antilles in an A-Wing. Wow. Look at that. And Sabine Wren in an A-Wing. So those are our pilots. Look at that for that. All right. Let's do the same thing for the Imperial version. All right. Because we know that one of them is, uh, Inferno Squad, right? So uh, let's, let's zoom into these a little bit more. We got uh, Sir Kins a lot with a super chat. Uh, thank you so much, Sir Kins a lot. He says, I'm so excited. The Armada models, especially the uh, precious CIS warships, looked so good. Yeah, they grabbed some. We're going to talk about that next. They definitely are. Um, oh, Cyana Re in the Interceptor. Very cool. Uh, and it looks like Wolf Wilt Streakins. I don't know who that is in the Defender. W I. It looks like Wilt. Or Vilt Berserkins. I, I don't know who that is. Can you guys see who that is? And then Gideon Hask there. Um, I thought it was going to be the... Is, is that the... Skir Scaris. Scaris. Okay, that's the dude from Rebels. That's who it is. It's, 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 I guess his first name was Wilt. Uh, Commander Scaris. Yeah, he was a good uh, defender pilot, although he just didn't follow orders correct. That's always the problem with, with, uh, with, with Thrawn's people is they don't follow orders. So Commander Scaris... Is there? Uh, we won't be able to get the, all of those same pilot names for uh, for the other f stuff though, because they did them differently. So it's going to be a little trickier to try to see those. Um, Gideon Hask uh, at Initiative Four in an interceptor. He says, while you perform an attack against a damaged defender, roll one additional attack die. I think that's the same ability as his regular Tie Fighter version, which was always good in a Tie Fighter, especially if you're at distance one and you're going against somebody, then you could get four dice. But this allows Hask. To get uh, up to five dice on a regular uh, frontal arc attack, which is really cool. We got another super chat from Punx Nine Ted. I think, uh, yeah, yeah Punx Nine Ted. I, pun well, I'll call you Ted. Uh, thank you so much for the support. Um, Volt Scaris. Uh, there's uh, everybody's correcting me now as, as I look back to the chat. Uh, yes, it is Volt. Uh, I was saying, I'm saying Wilt, like Wilt Chamberlain. Um, Yes. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you guys for the correction. Thank you, uh, everybody, for the super chats and supporting the channel. I appreciate that. Um, I definitely do. And in our Fugitives and Collaborators pack, uh, we are looking at uh, another HWK, which is pretty cool, and some Y-Wings. And those are pretty nice looking paint jobs, although they're all very, very similar, uh, which is interesting. Now, the, I, I like this this particular paint job for the HWK because this does actually reference the the HWK. What is this super chat? No nunchucks. He says, I'm going to read it because it was a super chat, but I do not agree with it. He says, he says, I don't like nunchucks. What? How? What what a way to troll me, my friend. What a way to troll me. How dare you, sir? How dare you, sir? And thank you for supporting the channel. And how dare you, sir? You don't like nunchuck. What? You know, Panthro lived and died by the nunchuck. He saved the Thundercats so many times. He built the Thunder Tank. And it was the p nunchuck power that en enabled that, by the way. Um... <laughs> Okay, uh, but, but yeah, so this was the, uh, the, I think, the HWK paint job that uh, uh, was in the Kanan Jarrus comic. And we do get a, a new pilot card for Kanan Jarrus at Initiative 3. He is the first light side Jedi for the Scum and Villainy, which is pretty cool. And that's enabled by, if you go back to uh, the last uh, document update, the new keywords, the new traits that are available now, the list building keywords available for X-Wing 2.0, light side is one of them. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's very interesting. Kanan here says, uh, while you or a ship in your arc, in your turret arc, defend, you may spend one force. If you do, the attacker rolls one fewer attack dice. We got a super chat from Rico Zaid, who says, I like nunchucks. Oh, yes. 
I like nunchucks, he says. Thank you, Rico. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And I will, I, 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 I will definitely read positive nunchuck comments in a, in a super dramatic voice. Hmm. As I gaze across the field of fallen enemies, I look to my nunchucks and realize they are the true hero. Okay, so, um, yeah, Kanan Jarrus here, um, you know, it, this kind of reminds me of his, uh, the, the other Kanan's abilities, is, uh, you know, making somebody roll less attack dice. Notice that he only has one force, though, uh, so that kind of represents the lost Padawan, like a, a pre-Star Wars Rebels Kanan Jarrus, who is still trying to find his, his, his place in the universe. Um, and now we're gonna start talking Armada, how many Armada fans we got here, um, how many Armada fans we got uh, that's, that's a good... Uh, Michelangelo from the Turtles has none... Yes, he does. Yes, he does. All right, so we've got... We're looking at our invisible hand here, our Providence class, uh, and they did show it. Um, Brian Houston with the Super Chat uh, says... Uh, thank you for, uh, for the support. He says, um, Eye of Thunderas, give me sight beyond sight. I can't see past May. Right, except... Except the actual quote would be, Sword of Omens. Give me sight beyond sight. Show me the releases beyond May. Yes, that is exactly how it goes. Ah, <laughs> uh, snarf. What's the matter, snarf? Snarf, snarf. I can't see past May, Lionel. You know. Snarf. No. All right. I'm really dating myself here because I'm like I'm getting so old that a lot of people don't have it. Didn't watch Thundercats now. So, once upon a time, that would have would have been more popular. But, all right. Um, still. Greatest cartoon ever. It's my favorite cartoon. All right. Uh, so the Invisible Hand looks good. They did show us uh, a size comparison with the Star Destroyer, although the Star Destroyer is in the background a little bit, so it's almost as long as the Star Destroyer. I think when they were right next to each other, it was slightly, slightly different, but roughly the, the, the size of a Star Destroyer without the width, not the mass. Um, a cool thing is here, we got a different look at the actual ship cards for this and all of them because I'm pretty sure... Uh, and this is all in real time, so I haven't had a chance to do a deep dive analysis yet. But in the original articles, we did not get to see uh, all of the cards. And here we can actually see all of the uh, the carrier card as far as the defense tokens. Uh, we can see it does have Salvo, which will be good for, with that rear arc. Um, yeah, and it's got it's got a, a pretty decent selection. And look at that side arc, man. It's got a lot of dice. It's got a lot of dice. So uh, we'll be coming back. Um, uh, B. Patrick JD with the super chat. Thank you so much, B. Patrick. Uh, and and he says uh, thanks for all you do, Krabok. Really appreciate your Armada, X-wing, and Legion content. Well, thank you. Uh, that's that's what I'm here for. It's uh, you know these are my favorite games, and I love to talk about them. And uh, I'm happy to bring you guys news. I know at once upon a time it was hard to get news and stay up to date on, especially so much different stuff, especially in this chaotic time. So uh, this is a good time to you know to be playing games. And uh, as 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 the vaccines come out, and pretty soon we're gonna be back in the stores, gaming with each other again, like every Sunday or whenever it is that you game. You know, it's it's, uh, every, it's Sunday. every Sunday. Every Sunday. <laughs> my wife's like, not every Sunday. I'm not every. Every Sunday when I stop and get a surprise for my wife on the way home. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes, the Providence class carrier. Um, no, it looks good. We'll talk about this more. And I still haven't done my deep dive videos into each of these new Armada expansions. I'm going to be doing that uh, probably next week. I'm going to start doing that. I, I've got so much. I've, uh, I'm, I'm starting to get caught up because I still haven't done my top 10 uh, Imperial or, or, or Separatist squadrons yet. I still, I still got squadron ranking videos to do. Those are going to be incoming. Plus a lot more terrain videos for Star Wars Legion. We've got a lot of terrain lined up for this month, by the way. So we're going to look at the Venator here. We do have uh, same defense tokens on the Venator, uh, which is good. We get a look at the Venator 1's card there. Um, Victory Star Destroyer front dice. We didn't. I don't think we got to see that one before. Um, so you know the Venator 2 is a little different, but we get a full look at the Venator 1 here. So that was... Um, that looks a good. One. We got another super chat from Pun Punksu Nine Ted, uh, and uh, and <laughs> thank you for the super chat. He says Gaffy Sticks wasn't Boba Fett amazing in Mando? Yes, he was. Boba Fett was amazing in Mandalorian. Um, he uh, that it was he was very very good. I can't wait to actually. I'm really I can't wait to see what they do uh, at the end of the year. You know, in December, man, we're getting the book of Bo the book of Boba Fett. 
it's gonna be good. How many of you guys have seen those memes of like when he's showing Mando his his arm and the, the hologram comes out, but it's like it's something else. Like, like it's Boba Fett like dancing at Disney World. He's like, this is me. <laughs> you know, and he's doing. It's like it's funny. So there's a lot of different versions of him. Uh, but yes, uh, we get the, a full look at the Venator One, and I think we've already seen the dice for the Venator Two. The big difference is he got two blue in the front arc with our, at the cost of uh, one of the, each of the other colors. Um, but yes, oh, it's Punks United. I'm, I'm so terrible at spelling. Punks, you. Oh, all right. The nine separates the word for me, so I'm thinking the nine is the point. Punks United. Tet. I get it. Oh, that one. See, that one went right over my head. That's what it did. All right. Uh, the Pelta, this one, um, they went too fast. I only grabbed a screenshot of it. A lot of us were asking, do those wings move? Do those pieces move? The fact that they did not showcase movable wings on that makes me think that they probably do not. I think it's safe to say the Pelta is probably locked in rear-facing position right now. Um, but here's our closer view of... Uh, Here's our closer view of the uh, medical frigate. Uh, as far as the full card, we can see the, uh, the update. We, we, we can see we can see all of that stuff now. We can we can see we can see all of it. All right. Um, yeah, two command, two squadron, four engineering. I think I don't know if there's a whole lot of new stuff on this particular card. Uh, the other version is the one that we haven't seen yet, which I think is the transport version or maybe the medical frigate was the one that we didn't see yet. It's uh, it's under fifty points though, so that's good. But we'll be we'll be we'll be going back. Um, the Venator 1 nav chart is bad. Let's go back and look at the Venator 1 nav chart. Yeah, well, that's... Um, it's not bad at speed 2. At speed 2, it's all right. If it wants to go fast, it's going to have problems. That's But that's why you have navigation commanders. Um, I understand that. Yeah, no. Well, you know, at a certain point, too, that's one of the easier ways to make the Imperial... Like, the newer stuff superior and also more expensive. That's also one of the things that's the penalties for that cheaper cost. I mean... I'll pay only I'll pay ninety points for a Venator um, that I'm gonna probably have to spend at speed two most of the time. You probably just go speed three to get into the fight and then slow down and then have your maneuverability. If you slow down from speed three to speed two with a nav dial, you're gonna get three clicks at speed two. So that's not bad. You know? It's not that bad. Alright, so the Pelta is up there. We're gonna come uh, I'll have to throw that image in once into the full Pelta video. Uh, and the Recusant. The recusant. Uh, we do have, um, we've got four defense tokens here also. So lots of defense tokens. Uh, our large ships all have four, which is good. Uh, and uh, it's got a decent little maneuver dial, right? We got two clicks on the second. So at speed three, this gets uh, significantly more maneuverable. That's interesting. That's really interesting. Um, yeah, look look at the look at the the support destroyer. Uh, lots of front. And this is a different one than we've seen in the other one too. Like this one's got some black dice, man. Look at those that front arc. It's got black. This one wants to go straight at you more so than it wants to broadside you. Although it's still very good at broadsiding. This one wants to go straight at you a little bit more. I feel like three, three, and three. So it can still be that carrier. It's got red, uh, red anti squadron die. Uh, we've got uh, what of. Uh, Turbo laser, offensive retrofit, two offensive retrofits too. So this one, that is a good support uh, loadout for the configs for this one also. And uh, of course, weapons team, really good carrier. This one will be at only 90 points, it looks like. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then, oh, Legion, Legion, Legion. I tried to grab, you know, I, I need official box art to come out online so I can get better, um, better, better. <laughs> Watch me whip, Nathan, <laughs> Nathaniel. Yeah. Uh, let's talk Legion because this is this is exciting. We've got the AA5 speeder truck. Um, it looks really pretty. They showed us a couple of really great uh, images of it. Uh, it it's got a, a, a changeable gun. It's got a, the top comes off. Well, I don't know if the top is meant to come off, but I don't think anybody will want to glue the top on after seeing the detailed interior. Uh, you can take the gun out. You can swap the gun out. Uh, you can open and close the doors, and then it has a fully detailed interior. That interior looks actually really good, which means it's going to be a pain in the butt to paint, because that means now you're going to be like, this is going to be the first time I'm like, do I paint this before I glue it together? Probably going to have to, like, I, hopefully the uh, the instructions kind of let you build it all out to where there's just one final step, and that's gluing those sides on. Uh, otherwise, if you have to, like, put the whole thing together from the from the get-go, 
Um, it's rough because I don't like to paint first because then you're putting glue in there and then it sometimes messes with the paint or maybe things don't seal as well. So, uh, yeah, this, uh, and, but if I'm having to stick a brush in there and, and paint little control panels and stuff like that from far away, that's going to be a bummer. Uh, but I do like that we're getting the nice glass on the front. Uh, and it looks big too, and it's on it's on the the, the gav tank base too. Uh, so it's on that really big base too. So that's that's gonna be nice. Um, the rebels are getting a good transport here. I just I need to see what else it's got that makes it good, right? What else is making this thing good? That I don't think that weapon is gonna be that good. I think that's gonna be like maybe six dice tops, um, maybe less than that, maybe five dice. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna because it's gonna be expensive. This is gonna be over a hundred points, easy. So I, I just don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it'll be like a 70-point heavy. And then sure. You know, but I don't know. It does look like there's a row of rifles on the back row. All right? What if this thing has some kind of thing, like if, if units that are on it, when they get off, if they disembark and shoot in the same turn, they get a bonus. All right? Like, like here, take an extra, like, su supercharge your rifle before you go off into combat or something like that. Like, that would be a kind of a cool... I, I think that'd be a good idea for transports to do. Like, anybody who gets off of this unit gets this bonus. That'd be a kind of a fun thing. You know, yeah, definitely closed transport. A lot of people in chat are saying probably closed transport. Uh, yes. And then the lat. The big surprise. This was the biggest surprise. The one thing that I did not predict was that the lat LE would be dual faction for the both the empire and for the republic look we know that these did exist during the time of the republic end of clone wars had one of these chasing uh ahsoka i think in what season five the end of season five or when she was on the run that was towards the end and that was like not long before before the beginning of the empire but i did not think that they would make this a republic uh expansion the problem with this becoming a republic expansion means the republic probably isn't getting the regular lat uh, I, and that that that's worrisome for a lot of Republic players because they're like, are you going to ever get your lat now? Uh, I, I wonder if a lot of people are, are worried about that now that it's like, oh wait, no, you've already got one. We're not going to give the Republic two helicopters, right? Or maybe they will. And also, what about the Separatists? I know the AAT is groovy. Groovy, baby! But, um... Why is everyone saying rip CIS? Because the, the Separatists are the only ones that didn't get another heavy revealed for them. Uh, so that's that's kind of why the Separatists are... Some people are saying that. However, uh, there, it's very possible that some of the upgrades that come in here also could potentially be used with a Separatist AAT. Like maybe there's just a good cannon that can go on any platform or something like that that the AAT might also be able to take advantage of. That is a... A possibility. I guess we'll have to see. But uh, but I'm looking forward to this one the most. This one looks really cool. It's um it's big. It's on a big round base. It looks like, and uh, yeah, that looks big. That looks like it's AAT sized, right? Um, it's it's very pretty. Uh, again, it's also got the uh, the acrylic in the window there. Um, and again, that's another thing you will not want to glue in until after you paint because. Biggest unit yet? I don't know if this will be bigger than the AAT. I still think the AAT, is, or even the ATST, as far as overall mass, is probably going to be bigger. But uh, I think, yeah, I think that's an, yeah, that's the, because the notch in the side, you can see that that's an AAT or Republic tank uh, build. Uh, we got another super chat from Jan Daniel Trujillo. Thank you, Daniel, for the uh, for the super chat. Thank you for supporting the channel. Uh, I appreciate you. With the, uh, with the blue bird, again, that's the second blue bird I've seen today. It's, they're, they're beautiful bluebirds. It looks kind of like a pear. Or is it a pear? Is that not a bird at all? Is it a fruit? Or is it a fowl? I do not know. Um, but thank you for the support. Uh, so yes, no, this thing looks pretty big. Um, and we got release dates for all of this stuff. So the X-Wing stuff is coming out March 26th. Armada is April 16th. And the Legion heavies are May 20th. May 20th. We cannot see beyond May 20th. They're starting... To be unbalanced. Well, we'll have to see. I mean, I, I, I don't know. It, it depends on the stand for this thing, if it's going to fall over or not. I mean, they, they may have a really thick stand. But it is, I could see this as being something that falls down and become... Oh, that's not the kind of unbalanced that you meant. You meant more like asymmetrical. But I see, I did a... Da that was a dad joke. I'm going to admit to you guys that that was a dad joke. Cause, so, so um, yeah, because, uh, you know, uh, Clinton 
says uh, they're starting to become unbalanced. And I made the joke that, oh, do you mean this thing that could fall over? No, that was a dad joke. <laughs> the wife is like, if you have to explain the joke, you shouldn't do it. Yeah, I'm like, well, that's part of making it bad. I wasn't trying it to be really funny. I was trying to be dad joke. Eight out of ten. Thank you guys. All right, so I, I, let's. I, I want to do something real quick. We're gonna do some. We're gonna do a little uh, giveaways. So if you guys are in, still with me in chat, this is your chance. Uh, we're gonna do. I'm gonna do. Let's do. Okay. All right. We're gonna do a couple of. First off, Star Wars the LCG. I don't know how many of you guys still play the LCG. We've got a couple of these. Let's see what we got. Um, I think it's these four. There's four cards for the Star Wars LCG. One person who is an LCG player is going to win all four of these. I, I'm going to tell you what to type in the chat. You're, you're going to do it with a hashtag, and you'll win all four. It's And these are just promos. It's uh, Dagobah Training Grounds, uh, uh, May the Force Be With You. These were Gen Con promos given out as the final uh, promos for the Star Wars LCG. Yoda... There's a Yoda card there. And then Seeds of Decay. So if you or someone you know or love plays the Star Wars LCG still that would like this set of promos for the Star Wars LCG, give me a hashtag Star Wars LCG in the chat. And I'll pick somebody. You will win that. Uh, what you'll have to do is you'll have to email me at mailcrabok at gmail.com and you'll win that. We also have Imperial Assault stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's two Imperial Assault cards. Oh, you guys are in luck. Somebody who likes Imperial Assault is going to get some stuff too. I see a couple of entries. I'm going to give you guys about five more seconds. And we're going to pick that winner. All right. Um, let's see. Oh, boy. Look at all this. All right. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to do a blind pick here. All right. That's going to... It looks like Kenton Carrier. Kenton Carrier, you congratulations! You are the winner of the Star Wars LCG stuff. So go ahead and shoot me an email. Uh, maybe later today. You don't have to do it right this second, but I'll set those aside and I'll get those out to you. Next one is going to be for Imperial Assault players. It's not just Palpatine; it's also Han Solo. These are promos for. Gen Con 2019 for Han Solo, Smuggler Leader, and Emperor Palpatine, Force User Leader. Uh, we've got these here for... How many of you guys play Imperial Assault, I wonder? Because uh, one lucky winner is going to win both of those. So that is a cool thing. I've also got some Armada stuff uh, that is going to... I'm going to do those in uh, Discord. As a matter of fact, as soon as we wrap the stream up, I'm going to put the Armada promos in Discord. And I'm going to make a new channel in in discord uh for giveaways um which i think is a fun fun this way you can react to it if you want if you want a chance to win and uh, that's the easiest way for me to keep track of it because if you're all just doing stuff and it'd be hard it's also a way for me to announce winners in discord as well and that's a pretty good way like a a, a, a channel like a locked channel that you can't that won't get flooded is a good way all right so if you want han and the emperor for imperial assault uh, I'm going to change this one up. You're going to do a hashtag. Oh, no, Clinton with the hashtag Imperial Assault. No, 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 no. This one's going to be different. This one's going to be hashtag dad joke. Hashtag dad joke because I told a bad dad joke. Hera, what are you barking at? I don't know. I don't know. All right. So, uh, yeah, give me a hashtag dad joke if you are an Imperial Assault player that would like to win these. Uh, these will be sent out to you. And I'd... By the way, if you win any of this stuff... Be patient because it's gonna take uh, it's gonna take a little while uh, for the mail to deliver stuff. It goes kind of slow. It does. It, I mean, it does. It does go pretty slow. So uh, just do your best and uh, be patient, and, and I'll get them out. And I'll probably have these out uh, with, with, by the end of the week. All right, here we go. We're gonna go boop, 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 boom. All right. It looks like our winner is Matthew Figpen. Matthew Thigpen. That's just me re reaching over and grabbing the screen. So congratulations, Matthew. Uh, go ahead and shoot me an email at mailcrabbock at gmail.com. Uh, the other two giveaways are going to be Nebulon B Classic and Nebulon B Small. These are Armada giveaways. Uh, well, I'm going to do those in Discord here in the next, um, probably in the next 10 minutes. I'm gonna, we're going to close out of the live stream. Uh, I'm going to hop over on Discord. If you guys aren't already there, hop over on Discord. This, I'm going to probably do more giveaways over there. 
Uh, it's a, it might be a little easier of a way for me to uh, to pick a winner, and uh, then I can tag you in it. You won't you won't miss it if you win because I can be like congrats at you know um, at dad joke one oh one you know or whatever your name is. I don't know. You don't have to be. Dad. You could be like nunchucks forever. You know that could be your name. It would guarantee you win every single giveaway. No, I'm kidding. That wouldn't that wouldn't guarantee that. But but you know it wouldn't. It would be a nice thing. You'd probably at least get a you know a hello there. Um, so yeah, what is Discord? In the description of all of my videos, there's a see more, a drop down button where you can get links and things like that. And I have links to crabock.com. I have links to the merch store if you're looking for a gator neck like the Ahsoka, uh, uh, the Ahsoka gator neck, or the Boba Fett, or the Darth Vader masks, or we've got Darth Vader gator necks. We've got all all kinds of merch. It's good. It looks so there's a little bit of green in there that's not working well with my green screen. We've got masks, we've got socks, we've got uh, t-shirts, we've got I've got a bag for the bag dice prison as well. That's really cool. You actually put your dice in there and then they roll better when you take them out. It's scientifically proven to work that way. Um, but and it's, it's like it's a, and it's a free uh, kind of like a chat room uh, message board kind of thing. Um, very cool. There's also voice chat in there too. People play games sometimes when I'm streaming. Uh, when I'm doing like something like Star Wars Squadrons, usually it will be uh, in voice chat in Discord. So it's a, it's a community, basically. It's a, it's a community site. Um, and so it's a great way to stay in touch, to interact with people, chat with people, ask questions, submit a list, get feedback on it, and, you know, tell other people what you think of their lists. Uh, we're a family-friendly Discord. It's very uh, positive and all that stuff. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hop those, uh, throw those over on Discord. And uh, gosh, I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out. This was a pretty good stream. It was, uh, it was pretty much what we expected. I was hoping to meet the team a little bit more, though. Uh, the only name, only person they name dropped was Luke Eddy, and that's kind of who we already know. Now I know there's a couple of other folks from FFG who are making the move also, but they're not some of the biggest, um, I guess, celebrity names, right? Like Luke. <laughs> If that's the right word, I don't know. They don't have maybe as much recognizability behind the names, but I know there's a lot of folks who are working behind the scenes that are also uh, are also coming through. So, uh, so yeah, if you want any more of the uh, giveaways, hop over into into Discord, and I'll uh, I'm gonna create that uh, over there, and uh, I will talk to you guys later. I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out. Big thanks to my patrons as well. You guys are amazing. Also, don't forget to check out luxuryplaystyle.com. Use code Crabock VIP. You're gonna save fifteen percent. And uh, also, orders of $35 or more are going to get you one of those free Krabok tokens with lightsaber nunchucks and the light side on the front, dark side on the back. Really cool tokens. I want to thank you guys so much. And as always,